Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Candlelight Eve service. We're glad to see you here, and, and especially those that will be connecting through YouTube maybe later this evening. We always welcome them. We have people around the world that uh, listen to our service every Sunday, and we're so glad to have, that, uh, for have them to have that opportunity. Unfortunately, Pastor Karen is ill. The flu bug had hit her household, and now she has it. So uh, in her place, her daughter Amelia will bring the message that Karen had prepared for, for today. We are grateful for your willingness to help, Amelia. We have watched. And we have waited with hope, with peace, with joy. And tonight on Christmas Eve, we light a candle for love, our fourth candle, and that our redemption draws near as we will light the Christ candle. Out of love for the people of God, the Lord speaks through the prophet Isaiah, as found in the seventh chapter, verses 10 through 14. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol, or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you? To weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child, and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. Hear the word of the Lord from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son is given to us. For a child, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Let us pray. God of hope, Prince of peace, Jubilee judge, and Lord of love. Your goodness is beyond our wildest imaginings. You give us more than we can think to ask, coming to us with impossible possibility in the union of flesh and spirit. We offer ourselves to you so that you can teach us to love this world and all people as you love us in Jesus. God of promise, God of hope, we invite you to come into our darkness as we celebrate the light of your love and the birth of your son, our Lord Jesus, the Christ. Glory to God in the highest. Alleluia and amen. Will you join in singing hymn 143, Angels from the Realm of Glory, is our song of response to the end.
you will remain standing and join uh, in the call to worship. Why are we here? What is there to celebrate? Long ago, a baby was born in a manger. What difference does one baby make? God sent him to us. Can this one baby boy born so long ago change my life and yours? If we receive him and receive him, he will be born in us this day, and our lives will never be the same again. We will know this hope, his peace, his joy, and his love. What are we waiting for? Let's jump for joy, sing and praise God for the gift of new life in Jesus. And our hymn of hope is 133, O Come All Ye Faithful. Please be seated. When all seems lost and nothing seems right, when we wonder if life is worth all the trouble, we need Jesus. Let us join together and confess our sadness, cynicism, and hurts to God. Let us pray. 
forever loving God, we confess our disjoint lives and loves. We confess that love isn't easy, and when it is, then we probably don't know the person very well. We confess we have not loved you or each other as you have loved us in Jesus. We greatly need your forgiveness and faithfulness, for our supply is very low. We need the baby in a manger who died on a cross so we can live and love again. Amen. Oh, the blood of Jesus washes white as snow. In his love we are forgiven and free. Thank you, Father, for the saving love and forgiving grace of our Lord Jesus, born to live in our hearts as we live in him forever. Please stand. those of you who don't know, my name is Amelia. I'm Pastor Karen's daughter, or one of them, I should say. Um, so yeah, she's out with the flu, so she wrote the sermon, and I'm just going to read it to you. <laughs> so hopefully this goes well. All right. <clears throat> the name of it is Waiting with Love. We have spent this month talking about waiting for Jesus with hope, with peace, with joy, and now with love. These four words should sound familiar, as they are the words that were represented by each candle on our Advent wreath. So I wondered, what does it mean to wait for Jesus with love? I went back to our Christmas story to see. Interestingly, there's no mention of love in the story. It struck me as very strange. Here is the story of the love of God, but no mention is made in the writing of love at Jesus' birth. So I looked again at the stories of Zechariah and Elizabeth and the story we heard from the children of Mary and Joseph and the shepherds. In each instance, I realized that the code word for love is do not be afraid. Each time with each announcement of the good news came the reminder, do not be afraid. Why? Why did these messengers of God say these specific words? They are words we often use for our children. Don't be afraid, it'll only hurt for a second. Don't be afraid, it's only the wind or only a shadow. I found my answer in two unusual places, Zephaniah and 1 John 4. Zephaniah the prophet had been prophesizing the fall of Jerusalem, which would be accomplished through the Babylonians. Much of the book talks of God's judgment because of the faithlessness of the people, especially the priests. Then came a surprising ending in chapter 3. If you'd like, you can read along in your Bibles to Zephaniah 3, verse 16. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. The sorrows for the appointed feast I will remove from you. They are a burden and a reproach to you. At that time, I will deal with all who oppress you. I will rescue the lame and gather those who have been scattered. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they were put to shame. At that time, I will gather you. At that time, I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise among the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord. 
God has Zephaniah tell the people of Israel to not be afraid. Why? Because God will not allow total destruction. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives you victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will re renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. What the prophet is really saying is that God loves you, and he wants to restore his relationship with us, his people. Then I was reminded of one of the best verses regarding fear in all of scripture. 1 John 4, verses 7 through 17. Listen to God's message here. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in him and he in God. So we know and rely on this love that God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world, we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he loved us first. The reason Zechariah and Elizabeth, Mary and Joseph, and even the shepherds do not need fear is because God is love, and perfect love casts out fear. God sent the angels and enabled Elizabeth to pair John in her old age and barrenness. God sent his Holy Spirit so that Mary the Virgin could conceive Jesus who was holy. And even the shepherds, the lowly night watchmen of the sheep, did not need to be afraid of God because he offered them the first good news and glimpse of their Savior Jesus. So tonight, I'm wondering, what are we afraid of? What strikes fear in our hearts this night or on any night? What keeps us up at night and makes us worry during the times that our minds are free to wander? God knows how we are made. He knows that our minds tend to take us places that are unhealthy for us to go. Instead of setting our minds and hearts on Jesus, we tend to let our minds creep into the what-if land. What ifs can be a dangerous territory, often filled with fear or worry producing thoughts. These thoughts are not helpful and they're not godly. They're dangerous. God offers us another alternative. Like the prophet to the people of Israel and the angels that told each person in the Christmas story, we do not have to be afraid. We can wait for Jesus's return, living not only with hope, with peace, with joy, but also with love. God's good news is great joy. It's for all of his people, including you and me. It's the good news of love. Jesus was God's gift, God's promise, God's answer to all sin, sadness, hopelessness, and fear in this world. Jesus came and lived showing us what God's love looked like in the form of a real person. And then he died, showing us what love looks like when it takes all of the sin, hurt, and disease out of the world and into love. Love rose from the dead because love cannot be overcome. Love overcomes evil with real love. Love casts out fear. God is love, and we have no fear of God. And when we accept God's love for Jesus, we have no reason to fear. If we take a closer look at the Christmas story, we see another aspect of this love, the true love of God. 
not the one we've created in our imaginations. The shepherds didn't have to get all spiffy before going to go see Jesus. Mary and Joseph didn't have to be in a hotel to have the Son of God be born. God's love is for ordinary people in less than lovely surroundings, just like where Jesus was born. God's love is wide and deep and includes people from any walk of life, any dress or fashion, any occupation, whether rich or poor. All of us can come kneel at his feet. Our fancy clothes don't make us ready to meet Jesus, nor does the amount that we put in the offering plate. Whether we are smiling or frowning, angry or skeptical, positive or negative, Jesus accepts us as he lays in the barn. Amid the animals and the manure, the crudest of places that anyone could ever be born. Do you know what happens when we come and kneel before Jesus? Kneeling is a messy business, in a stable when our Savior is in a feeding trough. No matter who we are, our clothes may get messy. The light isn't very bright. People can't see how fancy or how plain we look because it really doesn't matter. The one who accepts us and it frees us and most of all loves us is Jesus, God's son, who comes to us because God wanted us to have the gift of love forever. God wanted us to know perfect, completed love that casts out all of our fears. When we say yes to Jesus, our hearts become his home. We begin to grow up in his love and let his love perfect our love for each other and for God. We are able to wait for Jesus' return with love, and we never have to be afraid ever again. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we are overwhelmed by your love demonstrated to us in the birth of your son, Jesus. Sometimes the best I love you comes in actions or in your reminders that we don't have to be afraid. Thank you that we can share in the Christmas joy, peace, hope, and love shown to us, given to us in Jesus. We bless you, Jesus, for taking away all that separates us from God our Father. You invite us to come closer to your manger, to receive your love and grace this night in a stable, to receive you in a place in our lives that aren't pretty or beautiful, remembering that we don't have to be afraid. Tonight, we lift to you those families who are experiencing loss and sadness rather than joy and gladness in this time of year, especially the Butts family. We lift all of those to you in the hospital or in rehab at this time of year, especially Lila and the Given Vean and Trevor. We lift to you those who are separated from family because of military or other work, and we lift to you those who don't know your love and grace found in Jesus. May we remember with greater certainty than ever before that we never have to be afraid. Your love given to us this Christmas casts out all fear. We pray this in Jesus' holy name as we pray together the prayer that he taught us, saying, God our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
May God's love be born anew in our hearts tonight as we realize we never have to be afraid as we wait for Jesus with hope, peace, joy, and love. You may go ahead and blow out your candles and we'll go ahead and sing our benediction response, Joy to the World, hymn number 134.